I had been doing theater since the uh, 70s. I had a really long history as sound designer at the Magic Theater in San Francisco. My first dive into theater was with Sam Shepard. And so I had already done maybe four pieces for him. I had a real love-hate relationship with theater. But one of my favorite things was what would happen at the queue to queue. They would go from this queue to this queue, and you dial in the lights for this queue. You dial in the sound levels for this queue. I always worked very fast. And with maybe a couple exceptions, lighting designers took forever. And so the actors would have to repeat the same cue over and over again. And after, you know, the first couple of times through, they would do it the way they had rehearsed it. After that, they would get bored and they would start fucking with it in really interesting ways. Some of the most amazing acting I witnessed in theater was things that would happen at cue to cues when the actors would go away from what they had rehearsed. Mm -hmm. It always fascinated me. And there were times where I would think, why don't they let them do that when they're mm -hmm. doing the play? You would see these amazing, just brilliant little flashes of theater. Mm -hmm. And that always stuck with me. And so I decided I was going to add an actor because one of the things that's really fascinating about conduction is it's nonlinear. Mm. I wanted to see if you could throw an actor into a situation like that and how they would respond to a, a nonlinear form of acting. When I pull these videos up, it's hard for me to watch because it was such an all-consuming thing for such a long period of time. And then adding the, the video element to it and having to learn that on top of everything else. I needed more time out of the architecture of the ensemble to still be uh, a strong part of the ensemble. Because I think making those runways and having us in a different space we weren't like we should have been. And, right. and it, you know, it's a, it's a matter of time. How far can you stretch the architecture right. of the ensemble? When we made it a theater piece and we created a sight line thing, mm -hmm. getting to your point, it might have been wiser <clears throat> if we had kept you guys in the ensemble but with close-up cameras on you. Mm -hmm. You could have done all the physicality, but just on a smaller scale, mm -hmm. but it would have been made big on the screens. We always say we don't really own this until we've done it 30 times or so. And we did five or six or something like that. And with so many elements, there was so much to uh, learn from that. And that would have been really interesting to say, okay, this week, let's have the actors with a camera on each of them and let's see how small we can do it. Right, right. Yeah. And we didn't have the luxury of that yeah. because it was such a large production. We got close to getting one of those big grants. I think we didn't get it because we were already imagining how's this going to tour with all these projectors and a dozen musicians and two actors and four technicians. And how do we simplify this? How do we take this big thing with all these layers and synthesize it into something? The piece was really a question. Mm -hmm. Why can't we act on this? There was nothing new in the information that we were putting out there. It was just more horrific because it wasn't from the 1970s. It was now as soon as I arrive at the theater to do my setup, 
I was thinking, I can't wait for the talk back. <laughs> Those were and the it, first Grotesco talkbacks where they were longer than the show itself. Yeah, some of those talkbacks, you know, I, I remember the night that the they brought the theater department from the World College. Yes. To yeah. there was this woman who was very pissed off at us for doing this piece and not pointing our fingers right. at the bad guys. And then I remember this young woman from the World College. I think she was German or Swedish. And she just said, I don't think the point of this piece was for you to uh, go home and feel good about who you think the bad guy is. <laughs> and it was so eloquent. Yeah. It was like those little moments. I knew going in that there was potential that the band wasn't going to survive this. It's all fine. It ran its course. <laughs> 15 years that ensemble was together. 15 years. As soon as there was a schedule and payment involved, right. everything changed. And it sunk the ship. When the goal is the journey, you notice the wonder along the way. When the journey is to get to the goal, a lot of times you miss the wonder. There's so many things in here that could be stronger. It is what it is. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Okay, next show, one light, one clown. One knows. light, one clown nose, one cowbell. One That's cowbell, it. yeah. <laughs> you can't do it with that. You can't do it. <laughs>